is Antarctica off limits. This was a video request sent from a recent community post by Why I Oughta. Several people have actually requested this over time. And this is a great question. The answer to this question is yes and no. The truth is, I answered this question seven years ago, and that video is still up. It's titled, What You Need to Know About the Antarctic Treaty and Flat Earth. Many people don't even know that the video was uploaded because they didn't go and search through the 600 plus videos that are on this channel. You can go to the channel's homepage and type the topic into the search to see if a particular topic has been discussed, and in many cases, it has. In that video, I go over the firmament, the Antarctic Treaty. I even name specific cruises that will take tourists to certain areas of the continent. I don't know if those same companies still exist today, but I'll link that video for you on screen and in the description box and pinned comment below this video. Now, I won't repeat myself, but that was seven years ago. So consider this presentation an update to that video. The Australian Antarctic Program, Antarctic Tourism. Tourism has allowed many people to experience the wonders of Antarctica. Their experiences have led to a greater recognition of the region's importance. Commercial tourism to Antarctica dates back to the late 1960s. There has been rapid growth in Antarctic tourism since the late 1980s. Now there are a wide range of tourist and adventure activities. As more people visit the southern regions, careful management is required. Visitors must avoid wildlife disturbance, vegetation trampoline, introduction of non-native species and pollution. Strict guidelines help avoid these adverse impacts. The Australian Government Department of Climate Change, Energy and Environment and Water is responsible for the management of the nation's activities in the Antarctic and sub-Antarctic region. The Australian Antarctic Division has the prime responsibility for managing the programs and policies involved. These include environmental authorizations, and approvals relating to tourism and non-government expeditions in Antarctica. Now, another part of the question about Antarctica being off limits is that why has it been off limits for so long as there are old maps showing cities and towns, allegedly? And I'm going to talk about this being as fair as I can because we all know that when it comes to topics like this in a certain community, even when you show evidence, even when you use logic and reason, when it comes to this argument with some people, you can't win! So let's get into this. Because the heart of the question is, is there a cover-up? That's what people really want to know, right? And if there is, what are they covering up? The answer to which has remained a mystery for a very long time. But the way things have been going lately, maybe not too much longer. One of the most famous ancient maps, the Piri Reis map, was created by an Ottoman admiral and cartographer. It depicts the western coast of Europe and North Africa, as well as the eastern coast of South America. What makes this map interesting is that some interpretations of the map suggest that it shows the northern coast of Antarctica free of ice. And folks, I know I'm going to get flat for this, but no. This map does not show Antarctica, and at some point, this map was actually torn in half. 
Now you can see the Amazon River on the map here. Now trace the shoreline down past the central region of Brazil to the river with three branches, the Rio de la Plata. From there, the shoreline follows along Argentina, where the cartographer of the Piri Reis map curved the coastline eastward to fit it onto the paper. Some have speculated that this section of the map represents Antarctica before it was covered in ice suggesting that the map is based on ancient prehistoric sources. But that's not really what Piri Reis said. If this interpretation were accurate, it would place Antarctica in the South Atlantic, connected to Uruguay, and Argentina is missing. So no, that's not Antarctica down at the bottom. So when it comes to this map, we're done here. Now another map that does show Antarctica as Terra Australis, meaning the unknown southern land, is the Orontius Phineas map of 1531, when Antarctica was officially discovered in 1820. And this is only because Phineas never traveled to Antarctica to see it for himself. Now, this map appears to show Antarctica without ice, which has led to theories that ancient civilizations might have mapped the continent before it was covered in ice, which means nothing because the North Pole isn't covered in ice either. It's a drawing. Anyway, one of the things you have to keep in mind when it comes to expeditions, folks, if you chart a course to an unknown land, it's really not a matter if you can get there. The concern was at the time, once you get there, can you get back? It is one of the main reasons very few people wanted to explore the South Pole or the North Pole. The Bauche map, created by French cartographer Philippe Bauche, is another map often brought up in discussions about ancient Antarctica. This map shows Antarctica divided into two separate land masses, which some have interpreted as evidence of a pre-glacial Antarctica. However, like the other maps, Bauche never traveled to Antarctica and his map was based on his expertise and research in the field. And he was criticized by other cartographers at the time, even though the shorelines on this map look pretty accurate. So he wasn't a bad cartographer. The point is, do we really need any of these maps to confirm that Antarctica at one time was not covered in ice? And when it was ice-free, probably only the mountaintops were snow-capped. And do any of these maps tell us what was in Antarctica? Some theories suggest that the lost city of Atlantis, described by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, could be related to Antarctica. These theories propose that Atlantis might have been a part of a landmass that is now Antarctica and that it was destroyed or buried under ice. There are old Hindu and Buddhist texts that have suggested the existence of a southern continent that could be Antarctica. Ancient Greek philosophers and geographers such as Pythagoras and Aristotle hypothesized about the existence of a southern landmass that's where Terra Australis comes from because it was thought to balance the known landmasses in the northern hemisphere. During the medieval and renaissance periods, maps often depicted a large southern landmass, sometimes labeled as Terra Australis Incognita, which is Latin for unknown southern land. Now, tourists are allowed to visit Antarctica, primarily via cruises. However, they must follow strict guidelines to minimize environmental impact. The number of visitors is regulated, and they are only allowed to visit certain areas certain areas they can't go to because of the terrain, of course, and because there's just no one that's going to take them there. The primary activity in Antarctica is scientific research. Scientists from around the world conduct studies on climate, biology, geology, among other things. Military activity is prohibited on the continent, except for support of scientific research or other peaceful purposes. In other words, 
the military is always down there and they are always sending personnel back and forth because when you're down there for 90 days or so, you need to take a break and come back to civilization. But yes, the military is always down there. Now, there are areas right here in the United States that are off limits and in many, many other countries around the world. So we already know that there is a significant amount of land mass underneath the ice sheet in Antarctica, and it's not completely covered in ice. We know that there are mountains and caves there, as well as several structures that we could say are man-made structures or structures that are not natural. There are accounts of Admiral Byrd. There are the stories about Nazi bases, Operation High Jump, the pyramid structures, the mountains of coal, the dense resources that have been discovered there, oil, plutonium, lakes, wildlife, wildlife under the ice, a gigantic opening into the ice near research bases. We've heard the stories of non-human entities living there in a hollow earth or a portion of it. We've heard of the stories of ancient civilizations either being lost under the ice or still existing beneath it. We've even heard the stories of Antarctica being nothing more than an ice wall. And beyond that is another world with countries or continents existing separated from us. Crystal cities, alien craft, dinosaurs, exotic energy, portals. What's left? What else could possibly be there, folks, that we have not already imagined being there? You see, they want you to believe it all. They want you all to keep going round and round in this endless loop of theory, hypothesis, and speculation. It keeps people busy. Next thing you know, it's 20 years later and you're still trying to figure out what's there. And that's exactly what they want. Admiral Byrd gave us an account, or in his diary anyway, which in itself is hard to confirm without Admiral Byrd being here to confirm that it's his account. Anyway, if you don't believe that he flew into an opening in Antarctica and, and discovered a hidden civilization, what will you believe? You either accept that as truth or you move on with your life and wait till you can get something more concrete and wait until someone else can document another fantastic expedition. Some of you who have watched this channel for a while, some of you may remember me giving you another theory, a theory about the armies of Gog and Magog. Do you remember? I said, maybe this is where the iron wall covered with copper is buried. Dual Carnain traveled a course to the east, he traveled a course to the west, and he traveled a third course and came across some people who could hardly understand his language, and behind them were two mountains. They said Gog and Magog were spreading corruption throughout the land and they wanted him to build a wall to keep them isolated. Nobody knows where that wall or door could have been built, if it is real. So why not Antarctica? But here is something else many people may have never heard of. Antarctica may be the location where the watchers were bound and buried until the day of judgment. I mean, does that make sense? That they would be imprisoned in a place far away, separated from the rest of us? Because in some countries, we do that with our own prisoners, don't we? Stick them on some island prison somewhere, right? According to the book of Enoch, it reads, And I went towards the south and it was burning day and night, where there were seven mountains of precious stones, three towards the east and three towards the south. And those towards the east were of colored stone, and one was of pearl, and one of healing stone, and those towards the south of red stone. Remember that story about the ice bleeding red? And in the middle one reached to heaven, like the throne of the Lord of Stibium, 
and the top of the throne was of sapphire. And I saw a burning fire in what was in all the mountains. And I saw a place there beyond the great earth. There the waters gathered together. And I saw a deep chasm of the earth with pillars of heavenly fire. And I saw among them fiery pillars of heaven, which were falling. And as regards both height and depth, they were immeasurable. And beyond this chasm, I saw a place and it had neither the sky above it nor the foundation of earth below it. There was no water on it and no birds, but it was a desert place. And a terrible thing I saw there, seven stars like great burning mountains. And like a spirit questioning me, the angel said, this is the place of the end of heaven and earth. This is the prison for the stars of heaven and the host of heaven. And the stars which roll over the fire, these are the ones which transgressed the command of the Lord from the beginning of their rising because they did not come out at their proper times. And he was angry with them and bound them until the time of the consummation of their sin in the year of mystery. There's a lot more activity going on with that continent today. Our technology and detection equipment is evolving. It's only a matter of time before more is revealed to us. So patience. Keep this in mind, folks. While everybody is busy wondering what's beneath the ice, there aren't too many people worrying about what's above it in the night sky. Because even with a telescope, we can't see everything that's in the heavens. There may be certain things you can only see from Antarctica. Well, that's all for now, and there is more to come. Watch that video I did on Antarctica, and it isn't the only one, but it will be linked on the screen at the top right corner of this video and in the description box and pinned comment below. Please hit the thumbs up button on your way out. Everyone have a great day. Take care. And as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, Stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.